What if Marcus Aurelius was a good dad? <laughs> but before we jump into this fascinating alternate reality, I'll be honest with you, it's going to be similar to your what if. <laughs> My big issue with this bloody film, Marcus Aurelius, what are you on about? We'll get into it. Before we jump in, if you're watching um, and you don't, don't find us insufferable, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you like this style of content. Um, really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of these other what ifs that we carry on doing. Uh, or just let us know if you disliked it. So, what if Marcus Aurelius was a good father? Let's start by laying out why Marcus Aurelius wasn't exactly winning any Father of the Year awards in Gladiator. Mm. Throughout his reign as Caesar, Marcus was more focused on military campaigns than on being present for his son, Commodus. This created a massive emotional gap between father and son, typified by the scene where Commodus pillow squeeze, him squeezed death. him to death yeah. remember that scene earlier in the film where marcus humiliates commodus in front of the soldiers by refusing to embrace him on his arm was that a bit in the version that you that you saw i realized i watched an extended cut so you may have seen this you may have not there's an extended cut i didn't really it was, it was, i'm watching that really? <laughs> so it's a small moment but it speaks volumes about their relationship it's just one example of several in the first 10 minutes of how marcus failed to show his son any real love or affection which is all he needed it's all he was after you yeah, know was, i mean really. he was a bit tapped but come on then there's a letter Marcus sends to Commodus that Commodus referenced, <laughs> listing all the traits a good leader needs. Do you remember that? Traits he knows his son doesn't have. <laughs> it's not just tough love, this. It's more like setting Commodus up for failure. And let's not forget Marcus's blatant favouritism towards Maximus, treating him as the son he wished he had instead of nurturing the one he did have. Finally, in his death scene, Marcus even admits that Commodus's behaviour is all his fault. Yeah. As if that will absolve him yeah. <laughs> from the guilt and from the, go, the issues. You're not a bad guy. He went, yeah, I agree. Went, but it, hey, but this it is, is my fault. fault but you are really you are, bad. You are a you're creep. Terrible. You're a weird, <laughs> you're weird, a weird, weird little, weird freaky little boy. gremlin. <laughs> we will talk about you behind your back. <laughs> but it's my fault. <laughs> that makes it okay. <laughs> So, he knows he's failed as a father, and that failure sets the stage for the tragedy that follows. Now, I want one little caveat on this, similar to your one. Um, for the sake of this discussion, let's assume that Marcus is still nearing his death. Yeah. So, just like in the film, he does die within a matter of days of when he actually dies in the film. It wasn't perhaps by way of being Germanic shark <laughs> tribe. <laughs> Molly Goddard. <laughs> it was in the, in the breast of a weird pasty, <laughs> <laughs> pasty wagon. <laughs> Other than that, we're free to speculate on what might have happened if Marcus Aurelius had been a good father. So, first up, what do you think, Jambo? How would Marcus Aurelius, being a good father, change Commodus's character? Oh, he wouldn't need to prove himself nearly as badly. All of the issues, right? All of the issues that he mentioned were just um, enhanced by Marcus Aurelius's distance to it. Yeah, everything he does is like he's just trying to—he's just trying to earn that love off of somebody. The Roman people hate him. For the sure. Senate don't look after him. His dad doesn't love him. It like, starts with his dad. And it starts with his dad. It starts with his dad being unloving and not giving him the attention that he needed. Yeah. And then making a person who has traits which are dark triad. Yeah. Let's be honest. And talking of, let's have a look. So we had, I had a little uh, psychological assessment drawn up by ChatGPT. Um, and it expressed that Commodus displays several troubling traits. Just to list some uh, examples that it gave, potentially we've got narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and or uh, with comorbid traits. And there's also evidence of an Oedipal complex with psychodynamic perspective. It's a take, lot of labels. Take just... my word for it, all right? A lot of labels. The guy's tapped. <laughs> <laughs> a very creative way of with saying apologies just... to anyone with Oedipal complex from a psychodynamic perspective <laughs> <laughs> you're tapped mate yeah. so um, 
MPD, characterised an inflated self, uh, sense of self-importance, a deep need of admiration and a mm. lack of empathy for others. So we see this in Commodus's grandiose behaviour and his obsession with power and recognition. ASPD, on the other hand, includes a disregard for the rights of others, deceitfulness, impulsivity, summer from 500 days of summer, <laughs> ping, ping, ping. So Commodus, ruthless actions. I mean, the geezer murdered his own father. Yeah. That's just one of the things. One of many. Did. Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, BPD, which can involve intense emotions, unstable relationships, and a fear of abandonment. I mean, more than any, this this might be where he falls into because it's clear that he has an emotional range, doesn't he? Yeah. And he does feel devotion to certain people. Um, so I, I don't know if he's necessarily unemotional or unempathetic for sure but he's definitely playing in the extremes he, the sort of thing he needs some sort of anchor he needs a good yeah, father sure. figure yeah, 100%. to help out i was um, watching a video where it's talking about the psychological profile of this guy and they were like the reason that he is in love with his sister is because he just so badly craves acceptance from his family yeah it's like he's just getting confused between romantic love and like he's just so confused by it all. Yeah, exactly that. Like this guy, he's he's not been uh, blessed with the best hand in the deck. But you got to give him as much of a chance as possible, rather than just completely abandoning mm. the fella, because that's just going to nurture the wrong. It's going to make it worse. Exactly that. Uh, and also, now this is a point worth bringing up. So there's evidence within real life that a healthy and stable family environment will mitigate the more destructive tendencies of people with disorders such as these. So generally speaking, I mean, you know, one in a hundred people are psychopaths, for instance, and not one in a hundred people are, you know, murderous, yeah. raving lunatics. Usually it's people who just view the world slightly differently. And yeah. that is because of how they are raised, typically. Yeah. So we've got someone who is more on the end of a danger to society. <laughs> it's because of how he's bloody raised. All yeah, right? it didn't help. Marcus did it? Aurelius, who's all pally with Maximus. Yeah, do it to your own son, mate. All right. It, that's that's a very good point, right? Is like he. It's not like oh, I'm a Caesar. I don't have time because he's best mates with Maximus. Yeah, he's like, well he loves the guy. Loves he loves the, the guy. Keeper. He's got time for him. Any he? and look, I get it. All right. I would want to hang out with Maximus more than Commodus. I want to be the the husband. I want to be the wife. (laughs) I want to be the murdered wife. I'll be the kid. I'll be the murdered kid. We want to be murdered by Maximus. Maximus. (laughs) I'd rather hang out with Russell Crowe than bloody bloody creepy McGee over there. Look, look, all right. With the the black eye (laughs) fucking on both sides. It doesn't matter. Because of all the hug deaths that he's causing. Look, you might prefer some someone else's kids to your own <laughs> but when they look like that you need to do something about it you can't just leave them to it <laughs> just leave them to their own devices you give a load of it's shit your responsibility <laughs> stop stop hanging around with other people's kids <laughs> oh i don't have time <laughs> look how much cooler maximus is all right so <laughs> like we digress that was, the, that was the first first point oh Let, <laughs> is that not the video <laughs> Should we end it there? <laughs> Stop hanging around with other people's kids. <laughs> so, uh, this nature versus nurture, we, we, it sounds like we agree oh, yeah. that if Marcus Aurelius had been a more, um, you know, caring, responsible father figure, yes, Commodus would have not turned out the way he did. Uh, so, a quick addition as well, well um, scared of the dark. Probably wouldn't be if he had a decent, like he's an adult. If you have a good, healthy upbringing, you're less likely to be scared of the dark. But because he is scared of the dark, he doesn't sleep. And that fucks a person up. Oh, is that like, why he looks so horrible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's why he has the eyes is because he, because he has insomnia. And it suggests twice in the movie that the reason that he doesn't sleep is because of his fear of the dark. Oh my god! Yeah, like this guy is this. The more that I think about it, the more I feel so bad for this terrible guy. father. Terrible, terrible father. So, Jambo, what would this mean for the succession to the Caesarship? <laughs> would it just mean that we've got like another? We've now got the six good emperors rather than the five. Um, we just got another good one, and you know, Marcus, Marcus is a good dad, so he just goes like. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. You're the next emperor, and then and then Commodus goes. I promise I'll and do a good job. We all lived happily <laughs> ever after, and we're Roman. <laughs> we're all Roman now because <laughs> Commodus could sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, well, effectively, if Marcus Aurelius had been a good father, I agree. I I think that Commodus would have taken up. I, I think yeah. he'd have given I, it to him. I think Maximus would have gone home. Yeah. Everyone would have been, yeah, yeah, 100%. Maximus would have gone home. There were no problems left. In my version of the story, <laughs> as in yours, Maximus' family is still killed in an unrelated instant. <laughs> <laughs> but just because just we don't want to change everything. But in this one, a, a, do- a wild dog got into yeah. the house. <laughs> Someone's someone's, someone's rot while have, no, have no fear. Maximus is still father to a murdered <laughs> wife, wife, son, how husband, you, father. Maximus's family is brown bread. How do you get him in the pits then? How do we get him in? Okay, so don't worry about Maximus. All right, okay. He's all right. He we don't need to He's anymore. not a gladiator. Yeah. Um, so, and there's some historical precedent for this. There's a lot of it, actually. Commodus... I don't know how much of the history you know around this at all. Uh, a very a small amount, yeah. Yeah. Cursory. He was named co-emperor yep. during Marcus Aurelius' like lifetime. Three years or something, right? Yeah, three years they were they were pally. Yeah. Marcus Aurelius was a good father. Yeah. I mean, you we've both read Meditations, I think. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He talks about his son all the time. I don't yeah. know if it's the same son, but he's not... No. He's not... Yeah. He, he loves his son. Yeah. <laughs> They they change that for the Massively, film. Massively, yeah. He doesn't. He, he, the real Commodus doesn't have a weird thing with his sister. Although, do you know about the real thing with Commodus and his sister? No. Go on. Oh, go on. Tell us. It is juicy. There is a story there. She, it, in reality, Lucilla is crazy in love with Commodus. Not, oh. and that is unrequited. That's the the uh, he doesn't love her back. And then Commodus gets married, and Lucilla tries to kill her i think oh, and wow. then commodus like turns insane because of the betrayal because it's his wife and his sister right. who are like and so like that's and, the, and he the, was a disastrous emperor yeah is it because of that turn or is that my just... understanding is that it was more just because the abundance got to his head oh okay all right but that... my understanding that is what i'm told is the real story about wow. commodus and his sister okay that's very interesting it is quite mad isn't it yeah, that's that's really interesting. Maybe cut that out. <laughs> that's good. That's good, a good knowledge. You, you, you fucking don't don't pretend we don't teach stuff on this. Uh, this. No one's pretending shit. No one listens. This. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can listen to me tell <laughs> some more shit, right? In, in this scenario, the transition of power would be much smoother. Commodus <laughs> would ascend to the throne with the support of the Senate and the army. Maximus, who was Marcus's favourite in the film, would be allowed to retire peacefully to his farm and he would come back to see his deceased family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the need for Maximus to become a gladiator driven by vengeance simply wouldn't exist. At this point, our movie title would shift from Gladiator to Commodus. Ooh. As we focus on his reign as the new Caesar. Ooh, okay. So, uh, I added a tiny bit in just before writing this. Uh, how would you like Marcus Aurelius to die? Ooh, um, well, I've already taken uh, Ambush by Paid Off by Germanic Germans. Tribe. Mm. So that's Bagseed. Um but I, I was thinking, I know one of the ones that came to me when I was coming up with mine was that he was getting out of his carriage and he took a bad step and just mm. f- just hit the decks. And his old ass was just toast after that. <laughs> so that it would have been hard for, in your version, we were like, ooh, did Commodus have anything to do with it? That 100% would not have been. Wouldn't have been Commodus. <laughs> <laughs> happy coincidence. Commodus wasn't even, wasn't even there. Okay, well, he takes a bad step. Well, okay, here's the thing, right? It, I tell you, it's... They are they are setting off from the northern frontier of the Roman Empire, which mm-hmm. is seven hundred and fifty miles from Rome. It takes at least four weeks to get home. Oh. I was thinking, there's tons of opportunities for this four old fogey. Yeah, yeah, that's four weeks like traveling every day, on a, like very well every day. Like realistically, it'd yeah. probably be more than that. He so re- like at his age, mm-hmm. like, I, I'd say he read his own book. Yeah, put himself to sleep. Yeah, and didn't wake <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, which. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's got some good messages, yeah. but <laughs> read, read the online. <laughs> Makes me want to go to sleep permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me 
makes me want to kill Maximus's family. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, okay. So Marcus Aurelius, he uh, falls off a step. So now we go into Commodus's reign. Does he realize Marcus Aurelius's dream for Rome? Do you remember what Marcus Aurelius's dream for Rome was? No. It's that Rome becomes a republic. Okay. So what is a republic? No Caesar. Senate has control again. Okay. Which is what Maximus... I, mean, I actually noted you didn't do in your what if, but Maximus took power at the end when in the actual gladiator. Yep. Maximus says, give the power back to the Senate. There shouldn't be a Caesar. Yeah, right. I won't go into the historicity of this again, but that is just not what anyone wanted Marcus Aurelius didn't want that <laughs> I mean he gave the emperorship to his son during yeah. his reign starting off a dynastic succession but yeah uh, in in this version he wants a republic now obviously Mark uh, Commodus has been raised right he would know what his father's plan is his father has died mm -hmm. maybe you said you'll be in line for succession but this is what i want i want mm -hmm. to give it back to the people so you need to make sure that it's in a good place to do that yeah so that's where we start this he's not doing it but this is our issue he actually is he does have aspd yeah he does potentially have you know borderline personality disorder he's got some he's got mixed... a lot of problems yeah there's not is it okay marcus was a bad dad yeah fair but that's not the only reason that commodus is the way he is no and that much power nature yeah i personally i think that it is unlikely commodus would fulfill marx's dream of republican rome instead he'd likely seek to solidify his rule and perhaps even expand his influence so while he's not as bad of a character and he's not as whiny and mopey and childlike he's actually much more shrewd yeah. And he is a, and he does want the power. He wants to be in that position of authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the film, Commodus, is a political espionage thriller. Ooh. So what's our, the conflict? Our what's story that? would shift from revenge-driven gladiator epic to a political espionage. In this version, Commodus, now a more calculating and strategic leader, would focus on consolidating his power in a corrupt Rome which is, as Marcus Aurelius had mentioned, he, he's trying to um, basically shore up his resources and get into a point where he is hegemonic with all of these different mm -hmm. Senate figures in play. Yeah. So he'd work to monopolize authority away from the Senate, ensuring that his reign remains unchallenged. Characters like Gracchus and Gaius, who represent the Senate, would play crucial roles in this new narrative. And instead of openly opposing Commodus, they might engage in secret alliances, backdoor deals yeah. and covert operations to try and curb his power. So we could get into the the sort of stuff that you were going in with. Maybe yeah. we get Lucilla involved, maybe Falco as yeah. well. It becomes, again, a much different film, probably for the worse, but makes more sense because Marcus Aurelius makes sense. It has film. so much potential for the kind of Game of Thrones political sort of game mm. it had like the the universe that they have set gladiator in the the conflict that takes place it's asking for this kind mm. of con this kind of problem like with like the senate uh the senators and lucilla and yeah everyone kind of playing a much more intricate game but yeah, you're right. I mean, it probably just wouldn't be as good, but <laughs> no, but we also have Maximus it would be cool. maybe maybe Maximus does become a gladiator anyway. Just because he fancies it. Just because he, you know, wants to see his wife and kids. Yeah. And he's like, rather than suicide, I will do the noble profession of being a gladiator. And then he just can't die. Because he's mint. So, <laughs> he just keeps entertaining them. <laughs> yeah, so he just keeps asking people if they're entertained. He becomes a minstrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, my name is the Spaniard. <laughs> it's the entertainer. <laughs> no. Least <laughs> Spanish sounding man in history. <laughs> My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius and I am Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we've got a political chess game. The stakes would be higher with the future of Rome at risk, not through open warfare, but through subtle manipulation, strategic moves and the backdrop of Maximus, a, a rogue, entertaining Spaniard. Just 
doing his own thing, up, carving people up in the background. And maybe Commodus does go mad like he did in real life. You may have heard that Commodus also did enter the gladi- gladiatorial arena re- in real life for some reason. So right. maybe it comes to a head in that way where he has his political battle with the Senate. Perhaps he do- loses and he goes in or perhaps he wins and he goes crazy and goes in yeah. and the Spaniard has to put him to death. <laughs> I like it, man. I like it. Very nice. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was my what if. Taking a look at what if Marcus Aurelius wasn't totally incompetent. How would it look as a film? Certainly very different. Wouldn't be called Gladiator, but Maximus's family would still be dead. Hope you enjoyed all that. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If not, that can't be helped. Comment. If you liked it, like and subscribe. If you don't like it, comment. Comment. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. Comment. Thanks, guys. Comment to Jambo. Um, 